Get your leather pants and your spiked belt. It's black metal time. Alright everyone, it's Mark. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be doing some metal blackening. The product I'm using here, I will put a link in the description below. It is from EPI. I am not sponsored by them. They did not send this to me for free. I just bought it. I used it. I was pretty happy with the results, so I decided to make a video and show you how to do it. Okay, so here is the kit as it comes from EPI. There's four steps to this. This one is done full strength. This one is done at 20% concentration and these are done at 10% concentration so that's why there's different sizes. Uh, here's some examples of some things I did. These were on my 53 Chevy project and these are some of the bolts. Uh, this was a socket adapter I did. But what I'm going to do today is I have some random little tools and things that I want to do. But the main event is going to be this Hinsdale socket set. I picked this up at a garage sale for a couple dollars and I already cleaned it up and kind of polished it, put it back in this case. I never use it, but I never liked that it was just completely raw metal, unprotected. It hasn't really started rusting again yet, but I think it'd be a good candidate to get the black oxide coating. This is going to be based on the instructions that I got from them, but you know, I'm not affiliated with them or anything, so you know, no guarantees of doing everything exactly like they want you to, but this is what I did last time and it worked for me, so here we go. So the first step is the cleaning. And this is not very exciting, so I'm gonna go kind of quickly here. But you do 10% of this cleaning solution to 90% hot water. I don't know what temperature this is. This is just hot water from the spigot. I'm not gonna use very much of this, not enough to completely submerge it. Okay, so here you just basically wanna scrub them and then rinse. The last time I did this, I used a plastic brush. This time I'm using a brass brush. I don't know if it really matters, but. You just want to kind of scrub everything, and then when you're done, you want to rinse it off in clean water. So, you know how to clean things. I'm going to cut away. I'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, now everything's clean. I'm ready to do the next step, which is the prep. You probably notice now that this socket set is missing the sheet metal part. I had forgotten that this was originally painted. I'm going to go ahead and repaint this eventually. So I'm not going to blacken it. So what I'm doing for the e-prep is I have some of these little Rubbermaid containers and I'm going to put together the prep and the blackening and the sealer in these containers that I can label and close up and hopefully continue to reuse. So for the prep, this is supposed to be 20% by volume and it doesn't have any specification for temperature. So I'm just doing room temperature or in this case, shop temperature water. And help me kind of judge this, kind of guess what 20% is. Probably about it. All right, now all you do with this is put the parts in here for about two minutes and then take it out and rinse it in clean water again. So I'm just going to use my watch here and do this in batches so I can kind of keep control of the timing here. Okay, that's about two minutes. While those are in there, I can take these parts back out of the water. I'm curious to see how this one turns out because I think this has some plating on it and not all of it is cleaned off. So this one might look a little weird. Let's say that's about two minutes. And there's definitely a reaction happening here because it stinks. Whatever it's doing to the metal, it doesn't smell good. I'm going to close this up and label it, and hopefully it'll keep till the next time. And also, hopefully it won't eat away the container. Okay, now for the most fun and also most uh, stressful part, doing the blackening. Now when you put it in there, it instantly starts to blacken and it just gradually gets darker. So it says it should take two to five minutes. What I've done in the past was I just kind of watched it and kind of just kept moving it around and watch them turn black and take it out right when I want it. I've already mixed this up. I did a mixture of 10% of that. And you can see still how much I have left. I already not only have mixed up this much, but I also already blackened all those other parts. So it's a good bargain. Okay, I'm gonna start with the stuff that isn't as important. Miscellaneous tools from my lathe here. That is to lock the carriage. This is to adjust my compound. 
This is a tool from work. And this is a tool I made that I use at work. Oh yeah, that wrench is already doing some funny stuff. That has some sort of unknown plating on it and I didn't get it all removed. This one isn't darkening as quickly, so I'm just gonna leave it in there a little longer. And now I'm gonna put in the larger pieces here. All right, so for the final step, you just take the sealer, full strength, put the parts in it, and as they say in the instructions, put it in, agitate six to 12 times, up and down, about one to two minutes. I find that a little confusing. But anyway, what I did the last time was just basically put the parts in there and moved them around a little bit and then took them out and it was fine. I'm gonna do what I have and you can see how it turns out. All right, welcome back. This is exactly how I left everything 24 hours ago. I haven't even been out here to look at it. So this is the first time I'm seeing it, just like it is for you. Not too bad. I definitely should have been a little more careful with the ceiling, because I just kind of dipped it and set it down. So you can see there's some unevenness. Actually, just doing that evens it out, so that's good to know. So yeah, I'll just kind of wipe them all down. I haven't painted my trays yet. That'll be something for another day. And this wrench that still had some plating on it, it did turn out pretty weird. I really like how this turned out, and this is gonna be a big challenge to see how durable it is at preventing rust. This, you can see, was a free wrench that came with a set of folding doors. It had modified it for a use at work, and the chemicals we use at work, some of them really, really encourage rust bad. So I'll show a picture here of this wrench when I first started. This has been cleaned up a couple of times, and it just keeps doing that and corroding just because it gets used on chemistry that encourages oxidation. And here's that little socket with the ends machined. And that turned out really nice. The blackening process didn't seem to do anything to the chrome. And I kind of thought it might because the tweezers I've been using throughout this process, the tips blackened on that, but I'm not sure how good this chrome actually is. But I guess if you have good chrome, it just kind of doesn't even affect it. So there you have it, the EPI metal blackening starting kit. These are the kind of results you can expect. I'm really happy with them. I'm gonna keep using it on parts. When I run out, I need more. I'll be more than happy to go back and buy some more. They do sell it in bigger batches and they sell the chemistry individually. This is just kind of a starter kit. If you have any questions, you can ask me below and I'll try to answer, but they would probably be better people to ask than me because I am just learning. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.